Hello, this is Brett from Survival Comps. Folding saws. They're popular because they're very handy. Uh, this one's a Baco Laplander, uh, which is the saw I like to use. Uh, you know, silky saw is just fine. I mean, you know, whatever saw you guys are, whatever you like to use, roll with it. That's the way I look at it. But uh, it's good. It's a small form factor. Cuts well. Uh, Weight-wise is six and a half ounces. Uh, what happens if you want something a little bit smaller, though, and lighter? Uh, something to perhaps fit into a smaller kit or uh, a pocket or whatever have you. Uh, so, in doing that, I had a bunch of Kydex left over. And I made one of these with the Sawzall blade. Now, will it cut like the Laplander? No, it's not going to. Uh, it's but. It's the tool you have in your pocket when you need it that makes a difference. So you can see what I've done is I just took some Kydex. There's a section of Kydex about this size right here. And uh, peed it up, bent it. And I made a insert. You can see a brass insert. I made that out of shim stock right there. To reinforce the joint area, I used a Chicago screw and a regular, it's a 832nd screw that goes through that to retain that and I put a little small lanyard hole in it and it's a wood one I made and weight wise you can see this saw weighs one and a half ounces so that's nice and light and following along that I made a second one and this one I use a demolition blade or a uh, extrication blade and this one here is uh, you know it's a cross between a uh, wood cutting blade and a uh, hacksaw blade. Uh, it's not particularly really fine tooth hacksaw blade but uh, it does cut metal well and it will cut wood very well. So something like this is actually a good option for something that uh, you wanted to kind of cover both bases with it. And weight wise this one weighs a tad bit more. This one here is two ounces. But I did the same thing with the Chicago screw retention and I lined, it, lined the uh, joint with uh, just shim stock. Now, typical shim stock. Sawzall blades have these tangs at the back of it and you have to do some modifications to the blade in order to uh, get it to work. So what you'll end up doing is, is you'll end up cutting this tip off. I knock this out with a 3 16 bit so I can use a Chicago screw through it and then I just take my belt sander and just put a little curve on that right there to make it easier to fold and unfold. And a piece of shim stock. This is one of the ones I use as a prototype right here. And you can see what I've done is, is I just you basically just fold it over on itself. When you put your blade on the outside of it, you mark it, you drill it, and insert that together like that. After you with your reinforcement, just go ahead and make your edge parallel with your joint right here, your folded section of that. And then you want to take some uh, masking tape and run a strip of masking tape over the length of your blade to make it wide enough so the kydex when you form it it won't close ultra tight on the blade itself that'll give you a little that gives you quite a bit of space. You can take right your there. kydex and mark your center line I use a silver sharpie Pop that puppy in your oven. Okay, after a few minutes, get your Kydex out. Put in your press. Line it up to bend. Bend, baby, bend. second half of your press on top. Clamp it down. Okay, after a few minutes you get a time to cool and set up. Pop your clamps off. Take the top of your press off. 
and now we're folding. Okay, after it's cooled down, go ahead and remove your blade and the joint from this side of there. You're going to want to line it up to where you can mark your hole for drilling. Go ahead and use your silver sharpie marker. Okay, after drilling, go ahead and remove your tape. Don't be surprised if it takes some of your paint on your blade. line up your hole like that right there just like that you see it's going to stick out a little bit at the base here got to work it a little bit okay pop in your Chicago screw Okay, after you tighten your screw up, check your open and closing action. Okay, now we've got it cut in on the belt sander. We just go ahead and take some hand sandpaper and do our final sanding on the handle. Okay, well we're finished now. And this is now I've got a hacksaw to go with my demolition blade and my wood blade here. And you can change these blades out in the field too. I mean, all you would have to do is just take one of these and just modify the blade accordingly. And you could swap it out with just a Leatherman tool screwdriver if you uh, chose to do that. Weight-wise, we're sitting at just a tad over one and a half ounces. And it's a shame the paint came off the blade, but, you know, it was a used blade to begin with, so that's what's going to happen. And it's not going to stay pretty forever. So, I hope this helps. This is Brett from Survival Comms. Till next time.